Hello again, everybody. Harry Boxer, the technical trader at thetechtrader.com. It is Tuesday night, April the 2nd. These are the charts of the day. With the market acting very, to me, lousy. The underlying technicals today were very poor. With more declines and advances on both exchanges, more declining volume than up volume. With all the indices up today, it was a narrow advance, and it certainly was lousy. The only kind of the only time I see days like this is near important peaks. So be be the uh, be aware of the possibilities. And of course, I've been saying that for two or three weeks, not to scare anybody out of the markets, but just be careful and continue to hold stops where you can protect your positions. Starting off with ASTX, we're going to do both longs and shorts today. ASTX over the course of the last few months, you can see the nice run up it had in. May through September last year, then the pullback, 50% retrace, and now a nice strong move that's taken it from about 215.20 all the way up to 509 today. And if you take a look at the current stuff, nine days up here, two weeks down here, held support near the price and 21 day moving averages, and then it's been up seven consecutive days with volume increasing. Now, at some point here, it's going to get overbought, but the top of the channel and the target is near. 596. So we may see another day or two before the thing turns down, but be careful and keep raising your stops on this one. For a look inside, let's take a look at the intraday charts today. You'll see that it went up for the breakaway gap, held support here <clears throat> on this pullback. Ran up and coiled again, and then ran again. One, two, three, four, five waves up. <clears throat> with the fifth wave being on lower volume, always an indication of some loss of momentum. And then the stock moved into a coil for several hours before a late break in the session popped it out right there. Now, it did pull back into the close a little bit. On net net, it was a nice day up um, 48 cents or 10.5 percent of 4,100,000. So good technicals and a good chart, both long and intermediate into the intraday. BOSC, really strange day today, but you can see how volatile the stock is in how thin it is. It only traded 882,000. That was the biggest volume all year. It, it opened 322, went up to 474, and closed a penny off the high. Let's take a look inside today. Stock popped midday, right after lunch, ran up, formed a wedge, got extremely quiet. And then here's where it really ran this afternoon. Running from about three and three quarters to four and three quarters in the last 90 minutes or so, last hour actually. So, or less than that, yeah. So, you can see in the last 30, 40 minutes, a spectacular run up, a nice rising channel, and it closed right near the highest for the day. Spectacular close. What to make of that? Well, this declining tops line and this rising bottoms line have formed a big coiling type basing pattern. And if we can get it out over here, we should test 569, maybe as early as tomorrow. Beyond that, we have double tops up here, which could create some resistance for you around six and a quarter. So that would be my target. Let's call it 565, then six and a quarter if, and that's a big if, we do get a follow through. Celdex has been wonderful. If you take a look at the recent action, this rising channel accelerated here, this new angle of ascent, the recent pop and pullback orderly here on low volume, was followed by the breakout recently. Now, the only thing missing from this breakout here is volume, and as a result, it backed off. However, if we're looking at this as the pattern as opposed to this here, and it does get back above, say, 11.95.12, that's where I think the volume accelerates, and so does the stock price. Now, this next target is 14 and a quarter and a half. That's your swing trade target. The longer term target, or more of an intermediate secondary target. Is up around 16. <clears throat> Interesting chart intraday as well. You can see it popped and coiled the rest of the session. Is this a setup for tomorrow? It very well may be, as volume came in at the close and the stock closed firmly. But let's keep an eye on this tomorrow for a breakout uh, and then maybe an extension up towards that 12 level for starters, and then we'll see. CLIR on the daily chart, we're showing this wedge. Over the last week or so, today it popped, running up from 693 to 819. That closed back to 775, but that was up 85 cents or 12 percent. Volume wasn't spectacular, but it was 629,000. That was the biggest volume in about three weeks. We can continue here 
We should test, maybe take out the seven, excuse me, the eight and three quarter range. That's my next target. Beyond that, we could see it up around nine and a half. On the intraday chart, that also looks pretty interesting. You'll see that it started out today with a pop, a little pull, pull back. I'm sorry, that was not the start of the day, that was the afternoon. It started out with a pop and a really quiet call in the morning. After lunch, well, just before lunch hour, it popped, pulled back, and then stair stepped its way higher. A beautiful rising channel all session until the very end of the day when it rolled over on profit tape. Still a good looking pattern, and we'll see if we get any kind of follow through tomorrow. ECYT has been moving up the last few days. You can see how this pattern after the breakout and the inside day popped three days ago, followed through the next day, pulled back and tested and closed strongly. Today up again. Now there's overhead resistance on ECYT up in the zone, so I can't get too excited about it, particularly on lower volume. Uh, let's take a look at the, at the day intraday today. Let's see how it started out nicely. Here, ran up in a nice channel for pulling back at the end of the day and consolidating. Nevertheless, a good overall pattern, but it is up against key overhead resistance. HIMX doing fantastic. Broke out, consolidated for two days at inside days, a lower volume, and then started to accelerate slowly. Had another inside day, you can see how the stock does that. Yesterday it popped, had another little pullback day, but held kind of an inside day as well. Today it popped 45 cents rate, almost 9%. 7.6 million shares is better than yesterday. We want to see a little bit more volume. My target is six and a quarter coming up. Six, six and a quarter was my swing trade target all along, but a secondary target, about 750. The intraday pattern on that one was interesting today. As it moved up sharply in the morning and then flagged all day. Watch this one tomorrow. NBIX with a uh, little pop at the get go, a beautiful tight coil, the breakout, and then a little pennant and moves higher. But when it pulled back to test, it held and then meandered sideways in a consolidation type pattern for the rest of the session, more like a flag. The daily chart shows a key breakout two days ago, the pullback to retest yesterday, and then today up another 85 cents or 7%. Um, good, good action there, and if you can get up to my next target around 13 tomorrow, it shouldn't surprise anyone. Secondary target, just under 15. OPTR with a big pop today as rumors swirled about takeovers. Stock jumped from 1180 to 1448, closed 1391 up to 24, 19%. Volume was the second biggest all year. If you look at the intraday chart, it was also intriguing. The stock popped early and coiled all day. We'll just have to see what kind of follow through we get in the next day or two. Here's your five minute chart. There's your pattern, and your target's up around 15 and a half, if it does go. PAMT is moving steadily. The breakout came here and again here. Recent action shows a coil was set up, and then two days ago it popped, pulled back yesterday, back up today to 253 or 13.65% on um, 457,000. It's a thinly traded stock. But if it does move above this level, and keep an eye on it for tomorrow, we could see a move into the 27 zone. That could be an interesting swing trade, and it has momentum. Um, take a look at the intraday chart today. You'll see it popped early. Consolidated for several hours. At the end of the day, it broke out and took off and closed very well. So keep your eye on PAM tomorrow. Unless there's RVLT on the long side, as it popped right up to resistance and my target on 250 three days ago, and it's pulled back down as volume recedes. It's a good thing so far. Current support about 175.77. I do not want that violated. But if this continues for a day or two, we may see this turn around and quickly take out 250 and run up towards my three and a quarter range next target. Now let's move to the short side. Alphabetically as usual. AAWW. Again, I'm looking at a stock here that looks extremely toppy. Talked to you about this back in February and gave you a box of short on it. It came down and then went a little bit higher, just enough to stop out some people, and then rolled it over hard. In the last three weeks, it's come from 48.5 to 39. It's right on key support and at my target right here, 
love to see it bounce for an entry op, but if it cracks here, it can fall precipitously down towards 34, my next target. BJ's Restaurants, BJRI, after topping in a massive top formation, it broke hard here, rallied back to resistance a few times, couldn't do anything with it, and then broke again here. In the last four weeks, it's been rising up and a little bit of a rising wedge on rather lackluster technicals. And in the last couple of days, it's begun to pull back again. May have broken out. As a matter of fact, it looks to me like if we draw the wedge properly, it broke yesterday and followed through to the downside today. Watch the next level, about 31. That should be tested. If it breaks, look for retest of the lows at least near the 29 range. Serious logic has been ugly all year. It continues to drift lower. Bear wedge here, a big one there, another one here. And it broke yesterday and again today, closing right on support around 21. If this gets much lower than this level, we should see it quickly around 17 and 3 quarters 18, the next target. Lulu Athletic, Lulu Lemon uh, Athletica, after breaking down and forming a rising wedge, it broke hard two weeks ago. Since then, it's been doing nothing but coiling or wedging, and, but it is above support. The key level to watch. Can it hold 62? If 61 and 3 quarters, 62 is taken out, we can see a quick, rapid fall of a measured move down here. It takes it somewhere around the mid to high 50s, perhaps 56, 7. Blue Nile has been on my short list for a while since it cracked here and formed this bear wedge. We met at a successful swing trade short here, but then it moved back up to test key resistance right there. Although it banged up against it for a couple weeks, it is finally rolling over as it dropped. Uh, a bit today that maybe took it underneath that line and that line. So watch for downside follow through in Nile that takes you back to the 29.30 zone. NTI really got clobbered. If you take a look at this beautiful rising channel, it then formed a left shoulder, a head, a right shoulder. Today it broke the trend line, it broke the lateral price support, and uh, it should end the neckline of that head and shoulders and should be added to about 23.5 next, possibly lower. Possibly much lower. RIX, ever since the break here and the rally back here that failed, it's been acting extremely negative. To me, it looks like possibilities exist that we could come down hard into the low to mid 40s. RNF has been acting well for us. Gave you a short at 41, dropped down to the 34 range by target. Got, made a lower low, bounced back, and today rolled over another dollar forty-eight of 4.2%. This volume picks up a little to the downside. This one may be headed for a test of the 30-31 zone. SSYS forming a large wedge here. Perhaps we'll fail at this, the top of this channel and roll over today. Drop 176 or 2.4%. If it breaks this line, watch for a quick call, a quick fall to test 64. That's about eight points from here, but it can very well have a much deeper slide equal to what we had here, perhaps down to the mid-50s at some point. Stay tuned on SSYS. TFM among the <coughs> WF, WFM and TFM both look pretty ugly. You can see where it cracked here in a breakaway gap to the downside from the rising wedge here. Now look bearish, rolled over hard, a rising flag. Beginning to roll over again. Careful on this one, as you can see, a retest of the lows at 36. And last thing is WFM, the other one in that group, which looks all rather toppy. Big move down in February, only to form a coil or wedge over the last several weeks, but in the last two sessions, perhaps correcting that line yesterday, follow through today. Um, if we break the 62, two and a half zone, this could be falling rapidly into the, excuse me, the 82 and a half zone. It could fall rapidly down towards 74, my next target. That's it on the long and short side today. Long video, but I hope you were informed um, and got some good information for some ideas trading forward this week. Take it easy, everyone. Good night.